Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Thought Leader Club podcast. Today's episode is part two of this three-part series. So in part one, I shared about my career journey thus far. And in this episode, I want to unpack more about my business slash entrepreneurship slash thought leadership journey. And then later on in part three, I will be sharing my vision and also what are my plans moving forward. So here goes. So I want to start off with 2019, which is where my journey really started, especially when it comes to the entrepreneurial slash business part of my my life. So I started off my coaching journey by working with a few people for free. And I was also offering several free single sessions. And I would also work with Uh, clients for free inside this five or six week coaching program. And what did I coach on at that time? Well, it wasn't exactly business coaching. I would say it was more like helping people to build a content slash personal brand strategy and also supporting them to show up online confidently. And to be very honest, I wasn't even really sure what I was doing, but I did my best to support my clients uh, in building their brand. And one of my clients at the time, actually, there was only one person who did my uh, five or six week coaching program. And this person, she signed on her first paying client in her business. So when that happened, I realized maybe I could help other people to show up online confidently to share their work and their message so that they can make an income and impact. And even though I was not exactly certain in whether or not I wanted to specifically help entrepreneurs or side hustlers, I knew that the core of what I was doing, it was centered around my belief that every single one of us has a story or message that someone out there needs to hear from us. And that could also apply to entrepreneurs and people who are building businesses, right? So that's how I eventually became a business coach. But to be very, very transparent with you, I'm not exactly a huge fan of my decision or thought process here. And if I were to go back in time, I would not have chosen to become a business coach or to coach uh, side hustlers to sign clients in their coaching businesses, especially not this early in my own journey, right? And I want to acknowledge that I, I lacked a lot of skills, right? Especially back in 2019, right? And that includes both coaching skills and also the business acumen and other relevant skills that were necessary to grow my own business. And second of all, it just wasn't my story. Not at that point in time, right? Because building a business, especially back in 2019, it it just wasn't my story. So, you know, even though I was a side hustler at that time, yes, but I didn't quite have a compelling why for starting my business, let alone coaching fellow side hustlers to grow their business as well. Now, if we were to fast forward to 2023 today, it definitely would make a lot more sense for me to coach others on growing their businesses or being side hustlers because that was my journey for four years at at this current moment as I'm recording this, right? And I now have a much more like stronger portfolio of skills and also a body of work and also the client results and my own personal story to back it up. But to be brutally honest, I don't have, I don't believe that I had that back in 2019, right? I honestly, in my opinion, I kind of lack the experiences, the skills, and also a personal connection to what I was doing or what I was coaching on. So if I were to go back in time, what I would have done instead is I would have doubled down on building my body of work instead. And I would have focused on developing skills or honing a certain craft that I already had a natural talent in. And if necessary, I would have also taken the relevant trainings or courses uh, to build up those skills or that craft even further. But notice how I didn't say I needed more years of experience, right? And the reason why I say this is because let me just use a concrete example here. So let's think of a 18-year-old painter or artist 
who is just so talented at painting. So this person doesn't necessarily need years of experience to be deemed a skillful artist, and they don't need years of experience in order for customers to appreciate and want to purchase their artwork, right? So there are definitely cases where years of experience, they it just doesn't correlate to the results that you might want in your business or career, right? But instead, having a, a certain level of caliber and also having the, the relevant skills or, or the craft or, and being really good at that and also having a body of work to showcase that level of skill, to showcase your craft and to showcase the depth or calibers of your skill and craft. I, In my opinion, these are the two things that I would have doubled down on if I was restarting my business back in 2019, rather than jumping right into coaching, especially coaching side hustlers. But anyway, so back to the story. So I launched my first program, paid program specifically, on March 6, 2019. And when I say launch, I just mean I published my sales page on my website, which was Quarter Life Project. <laughs> it was called quarterlifeproject.com um, back then. That was also my business name. And I, I'm just kind of chuckling because it it brings back such fond memories. Um, and yeah, I also shared about my program on Instagram. And the really cool thing was that within the first month of the launch, I signed two clients at $1,500 and one client at $2,000. And I still remember when my first ever client paid me in full, I was just blown away. And then when the second client paid me, I once again was blown away. And and when my third client paid me, I was mind blown, right? I, I couldn't believe that people wanted to work with me. So just as a quick um overview from March till around July, 2019, I created over 20,000 USD in sales. And I was selling packages at 1,500, 2,000, and 2,500 USD. And honestly, for someone who literally just started their business like five, like four or five months ago, creating almost like 22,000, it was actually 2,000, no, $21,500 to be exact in sales. That's pretty good, right? So when I look back at why I think clients wanted to work with me, despite me technically not having much experience or even much of a body of work available at that time, my hypothesis is because they really resonated with my story. They felt the sincerity in my story and they wanted to learn how to create content and also share their story in a way that also lets them resonate with their audience and hence attract opportunities such as paying clients in their own businesses. And when I look back at my content and marketing in 2019, I can see that, you know, even though my messaging and marketing, it wasn't like specific or clear, and it was honestly really basic and generic. Despite that, I really truly do think that my sincerity in what I was sharing, it really shined through and people really resonated with that so that's why I think you know today many years later well not that long it's been maybe four years later right I still talk so much about being sincere with what you're doing and what you're saying especially as you're building your dreams and as you're building your body of work so that's how my journey kind of got started uh, in terms of my business and entrepreneurial journey but Despite seeing some pretty good results in my business, very, very soon in 2019, I was reaching burnouts. And so much so that I stopped my business entirely starting from August 2019 up until around February of 2020. And I actually let go of some of my clients at the time. I deleted social media completely. I deleted all traces of quarter life project from the internet. It was pretty dramatic, right? And there were some clear factors that contributed to me crashing and burning. So first, I found out that my mom had thyroid cancer and that 
shook me to the core. Like I didn't see it coming at all. And honestly, even though my mom and I didn't have the closest relationship at that time, finding out that she had some form of cancer was just it was just really overwhelming and very, very stressful. But luckily, she eventually got a surgery in late 2019, and she's been very healthy since then. But honestly, when I first found out around like August of 2019, I was stressed. And that honestly, like played a big role in me burning out. Uh, Another thing that contributed to my burnout was that I was not taking care (laughs) of my physical or mental health since starting my business and I honestly wasn't taking care of my health um, even like before I started my business because uh, back then I for a five foot two Asian female I was weighing 158 pounds which is 72 kilometers not kilometers kilograms and that's considered quite overweight by like those medical standards, right? But the more pressing issue here was that I just felt just absolutely horrible inside and out. I had no energy. I constantly felt out of breath and felt like some sort of like constriction around my chest. And I always felt like I had trouble breathing and my body just constantly showcased like symptoms of anxiety. And interestingly, I decided to get a health checkup in August, 2019, but what the doctor told me kind of like also shook me because um, the doctor told me that I was pre-diabetic. And I still remember when she first said that, I was like, me? Pre-diabetic? Like, like, what does that even mean? What do I do? Right? I was like, just in shock, right? <laughs> and she then uh, explained to me that one thing I could do starting now to reduce the likelihood of me becoming like fully diabetic was to lose weight. So that was the second thing that really like shook me and um, not taking care of my my health, like physical and mental well-being really contributed to me burning out. Now, the third thing, the third thing that uh, led to me burning out was that I was hustling 24 seven in my business. I was creating way too much content and focusing way too much on quantity over quality. I was creating content for like all the platforms available at that time, which included Instagram stories, Instagram feed posts, my own private Facebook group, Facebook live streams, Instagram live streams, a podcast, email newsletter, blog. And I was also working with either like six or seven one-to-one clients at the time on top of my full-time job, right? So I was doing like coaching calls in the morning during my lunch break and also in the evening. And I was consuming so much like free information and just watching every single free webinar or masterclass and just going through like every single person's lead magnet and creeping on everyone else and it was just so much consuming and not using my own brain to create fresh new ideas. And I was always like planning things, just like planning for a program, planning for a launch, planning for maybe a course, planning two months of content at a time, just planning, planning, planning. So that was that was the third thing. Um, and the fourth and final thing was that, you know, even though I was signing clients, it felt really hard. Like every time I signed a new client, I would once again stress out over when the next client is coming. And that led me to feel just constantly like on edge. And yeah, like I was just in such a negative headspace and I was always just caught up in comparisons and self-doubt. So, you know, taken together all of these factors, long story short, I, I burned out, right? And I just completely quit my business for six or seven full months. So from August 2019 till February 2020, I was just completely quiet. Like I basically had zero online presence. I deleted all my social media accounts or like I deactivated them. And I let go of most of my clients. I think I did like wrap up with like one or two or three. But yeah, I, I let go of a lot of clients and then I just disappeared off the internet. And during that that break, I focused a lot on my family, my relationships, and my my physical and mental health, and also my academic career, right? And during this time, I also applied to a PhD program 
and I got accepted around February, March 2020. And I remember I was so excited to start my PhD later on in 2020, which I, I shared in the previous episode. Um, but yeah, overall, during this break, I spent just a lot of time with the people I cared about. And I finally learned to prioritize my health. That is probably the the highlight of this break. And I actually ended up losing 40 pounds during this like six-ish month time time span. And I kept most of it off um, until COVID hit. But that's a completely different story. Anyways, so around, I would say it's like January, February 2020, I was starting to feel just a lot more stable in my personal life. And I was starting to remember that sense of fulfillment, impact, and and joy that I was experiencing during my business in 2019. And I decided eventually that I would reactivate my Instagram accounts. And at first I thought I wanted to be like a, a graduate student, like influencer and like make like inspirational graduate student content. Right. But eventually I realized that I really did miss coaching and I, I really miss the, the people I connected with. So I thought, you know what? Let me try my business one more time. But this time, I promised myself I would do things differently. And that's exactly what happened in 2020. So I reopened my coaching business around March 2020. And since then, I operate my business just in a completely different way compared to 2019. And for those of you who have been following me since 2020 or 2021, you might remember that I talk a lot about running your business in a way that is simple and streamlined, ideally on zero to two hours a day, right? Because ever since I burned out and quit my business for like six, seven months, I started to really appreciate the importance of not running your business in a way that feels like a second full-time job, especially if you are side hustling, right? Now, that being said, when I first decided to give the business another try, I was really, really low in confidence and self-belief as an entrepreneur. I felt really embarrassed about needing to take some time off. And when I saw my peers who started out around the same time I did back in 2019, and I saw how like far ahead they are now in their businesses, like I just suddenly felt like, I didn't have anything of value to share, right? And I felt so much comparisons and envy with my my peers who started at the same time I did, but then they kept going and now they're doing amazing in their businesses. And I also just felt a lot of like shame and guilt for needing a, a break, right? So that's why I actually feel like I struggled a lot um, internally during this phase of my business. Like I was having thoughts of like, who am I to share my thoughts and and talk about showing up online and building a business when I had to take a break to get my life back together. I basically felt like I had lost all credibility. But here's the thing. Because I lacked belief, I didn't push with the quote unquote strategy. So what I did from March, 2020 till maybe like late 2020 was that for basically most of that year, I kept my strategy low, so to speak, so that I could focus on just rebuilding my belief and confidence. And what that looked like was just going back to the basics and simplifying everything. And that meant sticking to what I knew best, which was doing Instagram content instead of doing 20 different things at the same time, which is what I did in 2019. And it also meant not caving into shiny object syndrome and feeling pressure to do like every single thing that I saw other people doing, right? It meant learning to do the basics really, really well. And this was actually what was tremendously helpful for me in terms of rebuilding back up my belief, both as an entrepreneur and as a coach. And it honestly also let me actually just function like a normal human being. So during this period from March till around October, 2020, I created $8,600 USD in sales. And I was actually signing clients like pretty consistently. Uh, and my offers range between 497 till 797 USD, which is quite different compared to like the, the $2,000, $2,500 packages I was selling the year before. And I remember like there was 
times when I felt like I just felt like so self-conscious of my pricing. I was like, oh, these low pricing, quote unquote, low pricing make me look like a beginner coach. But of course, that's just my ego speaking, right? And as much as my ego wanted me to raise my prices and sell these fancy high ticket prices, I knew that that was simply not the right time for this strategy. But instead, this was the time for me to really strengthen my mindset and belief and also rekindle my skills as a coach, right? Like actually work with clients and actually be a better coach and rebuild my my skills as a coach, right? And it was definitely not the time for me to let my ego get in the way of what my business really needed from me at this point in time, right? Which is number one, cultivating and building back up my belief and confidence and also actually being a good coach that helps my clients create results, right? So by the end of 2020, I had, again, started to just develop my own cadence to balancing my own business on top of my full-time job. And actually, by that time, I I transitioned from a full-time job to a full-time PhD uh, student and also balancing the other personal life things going on. And I was doing so well in terms of like balancing all of that so much so that I actually started this podcast, right? Because I, I saw that I had the capacity now to add on a long form content platform to my business. And at the time, the way I saw it was that in addition to creating content on Instagram, I felt that the podcast and Instagram together would go hand in hand because the Instagram would be really great for shorter bite-sized content and the, the podcast would let me have much deeper, more thought-provoking um, conversations, right? And now that it's been like three plus years since I started the podcast, I can confidently say that the podcast is one of, if not the biggest movers and shakers in my business and in my journey of building thought leadership. So needless to say, starting the podcast is probably my favorite decision to date. So that pretty much sums up what happened in the year of 2020. But I want to take a moment to actually recap some of my biggest takeaways or lessons from 2020. So first, I learned to master just a few key things and do them really, really, really well before diversifying my efforts and adding more to my to-do list. And I saw at this point how helpful it was to create a plan that I'll actually follow. I started to really appreciate how the best strategy for my business is one that I'll actually like stay committed to and actually implement and problem solve for, right? Because the truth is there's just like endless ways that you can grow your business or like hit your income goals, right? And every successful entrepreneur or thought leader will have a different journey or process, right? And it all will work for them to get to where they are today. But a lot of people, they give up when they try to follow someone else's plan or someone else's strategy because they just aren't able to stick to it. And I think it goes without saying that if you aren't like doing things, if you aren't taking action, then there's literally zero growth, both personally in terms of like self-development and also in terms of your business revenue, right? And it also takes time to build up your ability to stay committed and to stay consistent at a series of actions, just like how it takes time to build your own confidence in what you're doing. So that's the first lesson. And the second lesson I want to share, uh, which I learned from 2020, is that you can take care of the other areas of your life, even on top of your business and nine to five. So whether it's family, physical health, mental health, social life, just whatever it is, you get to create your own schedule. And more importantly, you get to call the shots on how you operate in your business. So if you choose to simplify and streamline, then you might actually end up freeing up more time for the other parts of your life, right? Like you don't have to sacrifice what's important to you just to make your business work. And, you know, of course, like there will be a certain level of sacrifice here and there, but you get to choose what those sacrifices are, right? Like for example, you can choose not to indulge in scrolling on Instagram for 30 minutes and instead choose to do a 30 minute workout, right? Or you could choose to not watch two hours of Netflix on Thursday night, but instead like go hang out with your your your, your mom for two hours, right? So 
all that to say, there are choices. There's always choices. And everything that you do in your business, especially, is a choice, right? So if you don't want your business to feel like a second full-time job, then choose to build your business in a way that that just isn't the case, right? So that's the second lesson. Now, the third thing I want to share is that your, your energy matters a lot. So when you're showing up in your, your, your best energy, right? And sharing your best and most original thoughts and ideas in your content and just really meaning what you say and genuinely caring about the people you want to help. Like when you're really showing up in that energy, so to speak, people can tell, right? And that's why I, I that was the first time in my journey thus far where I started to appreciate or just give more thought to what is the energy that I'm exuding or embodying when I show up both online and quite honestly, offline as well. And I think there was a particular shift at this time away from, oh my gosh, like when am I going to sign my next claim? What else do I need to do to get people to want to work with me? Oh my gosh, how am I going to hit my 10K month? Like when I started to shift away from these thoughts and instead to, to think more about how can I just do good work, right? How can I just create good content? right? Like what additional perspectives can I share that just might be helpful? When I started to do that, the energy that I was really encompassing in my content started to shift as well and people could tell. So I also wanted to um, add a, a, a comment here and say that, you know, if you're not thinking thoughts that like served you and if you're just like spiraling out of control and like caving into self-doubt FOMO, comparisons, jealousy, and just like other thoughts that just don't help you feel good about yourself or your business. Like, you know, people can tell in the energy that's coming across in your content, right? So that's why at this particular juncture in my business journey or thought leadership journey, I started to think more about what thoughts am I thinking inside my brain? And I started to think more about like, what are self-coaching tools or mindset tools that might be helpful for me to lean into. And this is also when I started uh, working with coaches who I felt like were really good at the skill of coaching to coach me so that I could clear up a lot of the not so helpful thoughts or the way I was looking at my situation or business, right? So because of that, because I wasn't so seeped into the negativity and the, the spirals that I used to be in, I started just feeling lighter. I started feeling lighter and business just felt, I wouldn't say it's easier, but it felt better as I was building my business, right? So I think one thing I wanted to share here is that your thoughts do play a role in your experience, as you build your business and career as a thought leader. So it's something to think about for sure. Okay, now the fourth lesson I want to share here uh, when it comes to 2020 is I learned that consuming more information is more often than not kind of counterproductive, right? And the reason is because you're, you're just not using your brain space to create from your own ideas or perspectives, right? And what ends up happening is that you'll end up wasting time, but like wasting time following the herd, right? You're, you're following what others are doing instead of just standing firm in your own ideas and perspectives and opinions or your story. And because, you know, looping back to what I shared um, both in the last episode and earlier in this episode, I really believe that we all have something that is of value. But when we're so caught up in what others are saying and doing, we forget what we uniquely bring to the table. And put another way, it's pretty easy to, to fall into this. It's easy to not be a thought leader, right? It's easy to look at what others are doing, what other successful people are seeing, and just model after them, right? To model your business structure, model your offer after them, model your content after them, right? And what happens is that people can just sense the lack of creativity originality, and even sincerity in what you're putting out. And that's why when I really saw myself stuck in the comparison and creeping other like spiral, I started to catch it. And I, I basically promised myself to stop consuming so much in 2020. 
because I just don't want other people's content or ideas or opinions to infiltrate my own ideas and opinions and perspectives, especially when I am creating content, right? I wanted to start practicing the the skill or the muscle of using my own brain and also my own heart, right? So that was definitely a huge game changer for me from that point onwards. And one more thing that really helped me for for my business and career since 2020 was I actually challenged myself to do a daily Instagram stories for a week at some point in 2020. And then I did that. And then I challenged myself to do another week of Instagram stories every single day and another week, another week. And then from that, that point onwards, I literally was posting on Instagram stories every single day, right? And creating these sorts of like micro commitments was really helpful for me in terms of developing consistency. And it also helped me develop a sense of trust in myself and more specifically trust that I would show up for my own goals and dreams and business, right? Because I knew that before I could develop consistency in terms of my my content output, I first had to build trust that I would ev- I would like be able to show up even when it's scary sometimes, right? And because at the same time, I was developing my own voice and practicing generating my own ideas through Instagram content, I was really starting to accelerate my confidence. And so much so, like I was so much more confident in my own voice and my own content, so much so that by the end of 2020, I also started this podcast, right? Which was not on the agenda for the year at all but it was around like quarter three maybe like September ish 2020 when I realized that I was feeling so much more confident and excited about content and at this point I had the capacity like time capacity to do so I decided to start a podcast right so the lesson here is that one like small decision or one small skill or muscle can actually lead to massive changes in other bigger areas. So by committing to just practicing my voice and communication skills through Instagram stories, that then snowballed into a full-blown weekly podcast, which since then has played a huge role in the success of my own business and thought leadership journey. So overall, even though I technically quit my business for six months in 2020 or 2019 slash 2020, I am just really, really proud of myself for learning all of the necessary lessons and also for recommitting to my business once and for all. And, you know, rather than repeating the same mistakes I made in the first year or the first months of my business, I have since then been operating my business and also life just in a completely different way. And, you know, even though, The business felt a lot easier in 2020 compared to 2019. And of course, like today, 2023, it feels a lot easier than 2019. It doesn't mean that the journey of building your business or the journey of building your career as a thought leader in itself is easy per se, because, you know, today I still have times when I am required to step out of my comfort zone and do uncomfortable things because you know, I truly do believe that growth is only possible when we're out of our comfort zones. And in order to take those big, scary, scary, audacious actions in my business or in my career, there are often times when I had to just change the way that I think and develop the belief that I am capable of making my one to three year dreams happen. And I know for sure that every one of you listening to this right now you are also very capable of doing the uncomfortable things to make your one to three year dreams a reality. So that's why I'm just so committed to help others build a body of work that will set them up for their one to three year dreams. Because honestly, I just want to see more people create a path that they have paved for themselves. And I know that all of us are capable of defining our own definitions of success. And yes, of course, like as you're building your dreams, there are going to be challenges, there might be doubters and haters, and there's months where you just want to give up, right? But I really believe that every single one of you listening to this right now, you are so capable of rising above these obstacles and continuing to go after the life, career, and business that you envision for yourselves. 
So with that, let's now hop on over to 2021. So in 2021, I was getting a lot more feedback that people are enjoying my my content, my podcast, Instagram content. And, you know, even though like it wasn't really like comments from my audience per se, it was more so like feedback from clients who either told me on our like discovery call or like in their onboarding surveys that they fill out when they 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 first work with me right but like overall like I was just getting more of a sense that people were liking my content and if I had to articulate why I think my content was working so to speak or why it was resonating with clients or my audience I'd say that it was because number one I was starting to become known for something Number two, my voice and energy, it's really shining clearly and brightly in my content. Number three, people could see my thought process and see how I think. And number four, I also think that at this point in time in 2021, my body of work was pretty, pretty substantial at this point, right? And it was continuing to grow and compound and people could easily just go through my body of work and quickly get a feel of, you know, what I'm like as a coach, how I think, what my story and values are, and so on. So taken together, I would say that I was really starting to become known for my thought leadership and just become known for something in 2021. And I think when it comes to how I was able to do this, I would say that it's because I started leaning into what was already inside my brain. Like, seriously, like, I really think that one of the key reasons why people enjoy this podcast so much is because I share my own perspectives and experiences. And like, I'm sharing from my own perspectives and ideas, right? A lot of these episodes are based off of my own lived experiences or honest opinions. I'm sharing a lot of the behind the scenes of my business or my journey. I'm sharing a lot of the the thought process behind why I do what I do. I'm sharing concepts and ideas that I literally generated with my brain, right? So that's why I think it wasn't... um, uncommon let's just let's just say for people in 2021 to tell me that they really enjoy the podcast and another thing that people were starting to say was that they really enjoy my energy from from my podcast and they were also saying that they can feel my authenticity through my content and I think you know I was able to do this because like I just operate out of the belief that we should just mean what we say right? Like if you're going to say something, then like you better mean what you're saying. Like don't bluff and don't fluff, right? Like if, like if there's one tip I can offer here when it comes to content and being authentic in your content, it would be that it's not about like using specific marketing language or like being strategic with your choice of words or like your your body language, but it's more so just about speaking honestly. That's all. Right. So that that's one thing. And I think another thing that was really helpful for me as I was building my thought leadership and body of work in 2021 was I was also creating thinking time in my schedule. Right. And and thinking time for me, it could look like many things. So sometimes it would be creating new workshops or resources for clients. Sometimes it would be reviewing recent coaching calls with clients, or it could be just like a space and time for me to whip out some pen and paper and just like create and like dream like literally right so it really just depends but I think having thinking time allowed me to really generate a lot more creative ideas than I would have if I hadn't implemented thinking time into my schedule but I think most like the most striking thing of all was that I really do think I was becoming known for something right and I think that because I was documenting my journey and showing how I was also a work in progress, how I'm also learning and honing my skills, how I'm continuously up leveling in every facet of my business and thought leadership journey. I think that people really, really like it was just, it was just helpful for people to see that, but it also helped them see that I was a product of my own product. That I'm actually in integrity with what I'm doing and teaching and saying. Right. And I think it makes sense because like a lot of people will recommend you or 
or like a common advice is to document your journey. And I think I was no exception to this, this um like best practice, so to speak. And I still remember there was this one particular client who said that the reason why they wanted to work with me was because like literally like word for word, they said like, I don't see you fudging grand transformations or making anything seem bigger than it is, right? Like they actually said, like you have a normal amount of followers and you seem invested in growth over the long term and you are using your podcast to funnel your content, which is what I eventually want to do, right? So like that just goes to show how people want to see the behind the scenes and they want to take a peek into how you think and how you operate. And I think through documenting my journey, another thing that I also realized that might be helpful is that it wasn't just the thought leadership content that adds value in terms of the conventional way we think about value, right? Like it's not only educational content or like very vocal opinionated content that is valuable to your people, but also showing up as your genuine self is also value right because like it shows people an example of what's possible because we want to look up to people who who like we just like their energy but like we we because their energy helps us see the possibility for ourselves right so that's why actually around I recall that it was around like quarter three of 2021. There was a bit of a like slight shift in my content on Instagram in particular, where I was starting to reduce the quantity of like educational thought leadership, opinion focused content. And I was starting to showcase more of a personal side of me and also showing a bit more of my my lifestyle, right? And that was a very intentional decision because I knew that not only was like I going through some, I was going through some personal life things. So like I wasn't in the headspace to create like really in-depth content, but also I recognized that by showcasing the snippets and parts of my life, I really felt that that would be also considered value to my people, right? Because it shows people a lifestyle that's available to people. So all that to say, I think that in 2021, I did a lot of things pretty well. Um, and yeah, I think that's why in 2021, I was really becoming known as the coach for side hustlers and really building the reputation of the the podcast, the side hustle club podcast. And because I was really becoming known for something in 2021, I think that this was clearly reflected in the results of my business revenue that year. So in 2021, I created almost 104,000 USD in sales. So that means that 2021 was my first six-figure year in the business, right? And out of that like 100K plus, most of it came from selling coaching. So specifically one-to-one and group programs and remaining around like 4K, I think, came from like miscellaneous like workshop offers and some guest speaking for other people's programs. Um. But I wanted to dive a little bit more into what I was selling this year. So in 2021, I named my program the Side Hustle Club. And actually, I'm pretty sure that both my one-to-one coaching program and my group coaching program were called the Side Hustle Club. And then later on in 2022, I actually merged the two programs into a one-to-one and group program hybrid. And that was also called the Side Hustle Club program. And I think this really simple decision of just having a common thread between my program names was something that helped my audience associate me as the coach for side hustlers. And yeah, so 2021 was also um, another really cool thing about this year was that in this year alone, I sold or launched four cohorts of the group program. So actually in 2020, I did launch a group program, but zero people joined. But then in 2021, when I sold again, we had two people join the first cohort in 2021, and then four people in the next one, and then six people in the next one. And then ultimately, we had seven people in the final cohort before I decided to merge the programs into the hybrid program for 2022. And this was really cool because like, 
Because I had decided to continue practicing selling the same offer, I was able to really consolidate what are my strengths and areas for improvement for every single launch. And then I would be able to like apply those changes I wanted to make the next time around, right? So that was really, really cool. And that helped me uh, recognize also that, you know, launching and selling one offer is also a skill that needs to be repeated and something that you can get better at, right? And the same thing applies to becoming known for something and building thought leadership, right? Like the process itself is pretty straightforward. It's number one, choosing what you want to be known for. And then number two, repeating that thing over and over and over again, and also practicing explaining that thing from different angles and and then just continuing to do it over time. That's literally it. And that was how I was becoming known as the coach for side hustlers in my own journey. So to wrap up the conversation for this year, 2021, I want to say one more thing, which is thought leadership is a journey. And ultimately, like building thought leadership, it's not just like a four month thing or a one year thing. It's a journey that continues on and on and on until you see yourself as a thought leader. And in 2021, I was starting to acknowledge that I was becoming known for something. I was seeing evidence that I do hold thought leadership. And this was only possible because I was building a body of work. And so that's why I really sincerely hope that you will also say yes to your journey of becoming a thought leadership. Sorry, your journey of becoming a thought leader and your journey to like build a body of work, right? And like, I really just want to say, start putting in the reps today. Start building your body of work today, okay? Okay, so onwards to 2022. In a nutshell, 2022 was the year where I quit my PhD, moved to Singapore, and became a full-time entrepreneur. And coming off the back of a really, really great year business-wise, I definitely felt a lot of self-inflicted pressure to replicate the, the business success of the last year and do even better. But as you may recall from the last episode where we talked about my career journey, you might remember that this year, 2022, was a particularly difficult year for me personally and emotionally. And if I were to describe what 2022 looked like for my business journey, it would be summarized with this statement, which is, we are all going to experience very, very human experiences and human emotions, even if you're a full-time entrepreneur. Meaning, we're all going to struggle and sometimes struggle deeply, no matter what your business looks like last year, today, next year, right? So, you know, if I were to use, you know, two key words to describe like, what this period was like. Um, Actually, you know what? Let me backtrack for a second. Just as a quick recap, I think for quite a while after I decided to quit my PhD um, and even for like the months leading up to that formal decision to quit, it was really difficult for me personally, right? There was just so many um, personal life things going on. Um, there was just a lot of identity crises. Marriage wasn't going well, honestly, <laughs> right? My partner, my, my husband and I were, it was a strained relationship at that point in time when we first got married. Um, friendship issues, things like that, financial, logistical stressors. It was just a lot happening. And as a result, I just really struggled. And I, I felt really depressed that time. Um, and it, it didn't help that like I had like panic attacks also and that I was starting to have balding spots in my head because of stress. So this segues into what I wanted to say earlier, which is the two key words that I would use to describe this time frame was shame. Shame is the first word. And number two, lack of control. So regarding shame, 
I, I just kept on feeling like I shouldn't be feeling like this, right? Like I shouldn't be feeling so sad. I shouldn't be feeling so anxious, so depressed, so unmotivated, so defeated, especially when from the outside looking in, I was living so many people's dream life. I was a newlywed. I was now full-time in my business. I just finished a six-figure year, like so much good stuff was going on, right? So I shouldn't be feeling this way. That, so that's why I was feel, feeling so much shame for what I was experiencing. And number two, the lack of control. I felt like I had no control. And I even wanted to literally just quit my business at this point because I felt like I no longer had the capacity to create or just give to others because I felt like I was just in such a dark place. And there were so many points in time in 2022 where I literally almost just like wanted to go on my Stripe account and just click refund, 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 and literally refund all my clients and just delete everything, right? And, you know, because of what was going on internally and externally in my personal life as well, it made sense why my business results reflected what was going on, right? There were many months in the year where I didn't make any sales, right? And I'm, I'm glad to say, I'm happy to report back that that is no longer the case, right? Um, you know, my business looks very different right now, but there was just um, a lot of things I had to work through in 2022. And as a result, there's a lot of lessons I want to share as well. So number one, I can now see that we are all so prone to gaslighting ourselves both in business or in life, right? For me, I kept on telling myself that I shouldn't be feeling this way because I had so much good stuff going on. I shouldn't be thinking these thoughts because I'm living someone else's dream life. I shouldn't be like this because I have everything I need to be living a comfortable life, right? And it took maybe like seven, eight months to start to feel like just more accepting of it is okay if I feel this way. Like I get to feel this, it is valid. I don't have to gaslight myself. I get to experience all the feelings and I'm allowed to experience them. And when I finally started to embrace that, I'm allowed to feel whatever I was feeling and I don't need to shame myself for what I was thinking or feeling. That's when I was able to start like finally unbind and unwind from that shame. And that led to a second really, really profound lesson, which is there's always options in every situation there really, really are always options, right? And of course, there's oftentimes no perfect option. And I think that's why I, I I struggled a lot at the time because like, although I did like see that there were options, I was just resistant because like it felt like nothing was like the 100% super optimal option. Like there were always some cons to every option. And I was so fixated on the cons, right? So that's why I felt like, at the time, I felt like I had no control and I felt really powerless. But then when I started to realize like I there's always options, then I started to recognize I, I do have more control than I, 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 re, I realized at first. And I started to also apply that to the way I thought about just the other parts of my life, right? And, you know, by the, around the end of 2022, I could finally arrive at a point where I I felt like oh I am just getting started right because I was sorry sorry I was finally able to unpack the shame and recognize I had a lot more power than I realized I started to see what I wanted to do again I started to recognize like, oh, I want to help people. I realized that my previous dream, which was side hustling and pursuing a career in research, that was just a stepping stone to what is next. And I think for a lot of the the, the year in 2022, I was grieving the shedding of an identity, right? And I was grieving the shedding of what felt comfortable, for the past few years. But then by the end of 2022, after processing all the emotions and really allowing myself to lean into the bigger vision I have for myself, it it honestly, like, it changed a lot for me. And, you know, by the end of the year, when I look back, honestly, it wasn't so bad. 
right? Like I continued to build the reputation of my signature program, the Side Hustle Club program. And I also was continuing to build brand awareness for for um, the podcast. I also was continuing to grow my body of work through Instagram and the podcast. And I also had some really cool opportunities come my way. Like I was featured on the Today Online newspaper in Singapore. I was featured on the CNA 938 radio also in Singapore. And I also did a workshop for the University of Toronto, uh, Victoria College specifically. So honestly, it wasn't a bad year at all, especially in my business. But all that being said, there is a message I want to share here when it comes to 2022, which is as you continue to grow your thought leadership career and build your body of work and work towards your one to three year dreams, I think it goes without saying that we are going to be human beings and we will experience human life events, oftentimes unexpected ones. And they might feel really difficult at times. And we're all also inevitably going to experience human emotions, right? If anything, all of this is required to be a human being. And whether it's experiencing stress or frustration or overwhelm, or you're feeling so defeated because a major life event hit you and you didn't see it coming at all, or just anything else in between, a lot of the time, it will feel like you have no capacity to create or work on your business or show up online or for your clients, right? And this year in 2022, I found myself really struggling to manage my thoughts and emotions and physical energy. And as a result, I found it really difficult to create the capacity to work on my business. So there was a pretty lengthy period of time where I just didn't make any offers or sell my program. And I also recognize that I just wasn't in a place to take on new clients. And yeah, I just, I just, it just wasn't what my body or mental health or even my business needed from me at that time. And so one of the most important things I had to really work on was trusting that this period of my life and business does not define the overall long-term trajectory of my business. I had to be very, 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 very aware of where my brain wanted to just overgeneralize and catastrophize this current phase to the overall lifespan of my business. For example, me not creating content right now does not mean that I'm forever not able to create content anymore. Me not making offers on the marketing end right now does not mean that my business is over and I'll no longer sign clients like ever again. Me needing to rest right now does not mean that I'm going to like rest to this extent forever. And also right now I'm slowing down so that I can speed the hell up in 2023. And another very profound belief for me during this season of my business is knowing that the skills that I use inside my business is not dependent on how I feel in my personal life. Even if I'm going through a particularly challenging personal life event, it literally does not have anything to do with the skill sets or mindsets that I need to use in my business or in my thought leader career. That said, I'm still allowed to be human. So for example, I could literally just be a potato for like an hour before a client call. Like, and then as soon as I hop on the Zoom call, I put my coach hat on and coach the client. And then after I hop off Zoom, I go back to being a human being, right? And I I realize here that all versions of me can coexist. Like they don't interfere with each other doing their own thing. For example, content creator Cheryl, the marketer making offers, Cheryl, the coach, Cheryl, the human being, Cheryl, like they could all literally coexist at the same time and just stay in their own lane simultaneously. And I want to share one more thing, which is it was at some point in 2022, I started to observe this new thought creep up, which was, I started to think, huh, I don't think I'm supposed to share any content until I feel like I've processed like all the life things and feel better. 
right? Like maybe right now, if I want to share some recent takeaways or lessons, then that would be sharing too much because I'm still navigating a lot of things right now. Maybe I should just wait until I have it all together. And I started to wonder also, maybe there is a certain professional image I'm supposed to maintain since I am a business overall. I have a reputation to protect, right? And then I started to like dig myself into a hole of, oh my gosh, like, is my image too immature? Do people think that my my Instagram feed is too chaotic or too cute or like whatever, right? But like, basically, the thing I had to realize or remember here was that literally since day one of my business, I built traction quickly because I was sharing honestly and sincerely and genuinely, literally since day one, right? Like even from 2019, the most common thing I hear on my application forums when people apply to work with me is they say, I like your energy or I really resonated with your story or I appreciate your authenticity and sincerity, right? So basically all that to say, like at this point, I have so much evidence to show that one of my strengths is my ability to build connection with my audience and community. But but honestly, yeah, like I did have the thought at, at this point, like, am I sharing too much? Should I even be sharing that I'm struggling emotionally in, in business or in life? That was definitely something that came up for me. But, you know, my views on content still remains the same to this day, which is content has changed my life. I honestly cannot unsee how the right content at the right time, at the right place has changed my life. I cannot unsee how honest, genuine storytelling can help other people. And I deeply believe this for my own work. So when I started to look at this from, okay, so Cheryl, you you really believe that your content can help someone especially if it's something that they they need to see or hear during a particular time in their own journey. So, okay, so then is is it even possible to overshare when I believe that my work or my content can help someone? And that's when I realized, I realized that if I truly believe this, then I can never overshare. I can never overshare if I really believe and mean what I'm saying. Right, Because I never know who's going to need it or, or need to hear it and see it at the right place at the right time for themselves. So right now, back in 2022, I may not know which piece of content is what someone someone needs, but I trust that they will find it at the right place at the right time for them. So rather than trying to trying to predict like, oh, what should I talk about? Like what will Like, what's the most strategic thing to say? Is it too much? Is it blah, 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 blah? Like, just rather than thinking about all those nitty gritty things, I just focus on creating content within the capacity that I I did have. I was creating content that I genuinely and honestly believed in because I trust that it will help someone. Whether it's now or later, it, it doesn't matter, right? And I also, again... I just want to reiterate the the value and the impact of my content is constantly compounding. So from a strategy perspective, someone who finds my work from like a year later, they will have a lot of content to consume because I have a, a whole whole body of work now and that will help them make a decision about working with me, right? So like all that to say like, Every piece of content contributes to your body of work. Your body of work is always growing. Every touch point you put down is giving to your body of work. So basically, by the end of 2022, even though it was a pretty difficult year for me personally, by the end of the year, I realized I have nothing to lose. Like literally, I have nothing to lose. So what do I want to be known for? How do I want to help people? How do I want to lead? What decisions do I want to make so that I can amplify my work even more next year, right? And I love being in this headspace, this I got nothing to lose energy because that's when I literally like free my mind from any constraints. That's when I'm the most creative. And that is exactly how I entered 2023. So 2023 Honestly, it was a, 
a very peaceful, it was just very peaceful so far, like both online and offline, both in business slash career and in my personal life. So as of recording this, it is uh, today, November 28, 2023. And this year so far, I have been continuing to do my business full time. It is my primary source of income. I do occasionally do some contract work for my uh, ex PhD supervisor. So I support him and his team by writing manuscripts and other publications with them. But 99% of my income comes from my business, right? Uh, I also uh, continue to sell my coaching program, the Slide Hustle Club program. Uh, and yeah, I also ran a program called the podcast club earlier at the beginning of the year. And that was a lot of fun. Um, I also continued to build my body of work this year through the podcast and Instagram. And I also started to use LinkedIn and email, uh, more regularly. I wouldn't say it's consistent yet, especially for email, but I am building my way there. Um, so yeah, in addition to my weekly podcast episode and also weekly Instagram content, I also started to use LinkedIn to promote the podcast on a more regular basis. So currently I work with Esther. Uh, you can find Esther on Instagram at estherloke.co. So E-S-T-H-E-R-L-O-K-E dot C-O on Instagram. So Esther, basically she turns my video podcast content into shorter video clips, which I then post as Instagram Reels, TikTok videos, and LinkedIn video. She also turns my written script for the podcast into blog posts and LinkedIn articles. So since January of 2023, I've been literally starting from episode one of this podcast, and I've been posting several LinkedIn articles every week to kind of like catch up on all the solo episodes I've done up to this date. Um, And then as for email, I'm still trying to build my my muscle for weekly emails. And I've been really trying really hard to write one email newsletter every single week on Monday. So side note, if you want to join our email newsletter, you can sign up at CherylTheory.LPAGES.CO slash email. Okay, so some other highlights from the year so far include speaking for some in-person events such as the Asian Wonder Women event in Singapore. And I've also spoken twice in person for the GT Humanistic Youth Center, which is a nonprofit organization. Uh, the Side Hustle Club podcast also received the Golden Crane Award from the Asian American Podcasters Association, which was definitely something I did not expect at all for this year. So Overall, in 2023, I really think that I've developed a new relationship with my business. So specifically, I really now see that my business is a lifelong journey that I'm excited to build and to continue just honing my craft and skills that is required to to build this business and this, this dream, right? And even with all the highs and lows that are inevitable, as a full-time entrepreneur, I really learned to just embrace them, let's just say, and really just enjoy more of the journey as an entrepreneur, as a content creator, and as a thought leader. And I want to just kind of like make a slight pivot here and say that I personally would not recommend someone to pursue entrepreneurship unless you're really committed to doing this for the long term. I mean, for myself, it's been four plus years, almost five years since I started my my online journey. Maybe it's been five years. I don't even know. But it's been a while, right, since I started this. And I've just seen so many people give up after six months, a year, two years. And I think what happens is that a lot of people like the idea of calling themselves an entrepreneur or content creator or thought leader, but they're not willing to endure the mental stamina that is required, such as being willing to keep going, even when you're disappointed with your results, not blaming external circumstances, and so on. And I've seen so many people wanting to have the title and have the Instagram clout of being an entrepreneur, but they're really resistant towards leaning into the messiness that is often natural and expected in this journey as you're building this this new career right and I also hear a lot of people say that they wish they can just 
just coach clients and not have to worry about the, the marketing side of things or the sales side of things. But the more I thought about this sentiment, the more I, I'm just curious about like whether this person even like cares about being an entrepreneur because being an entrepreneur encompasses the business components or business skill sets, right? Like there are steps or like skills required to build a business. So if someone doesn't want to commit to the art and science of building a business, then are they really dedicated to growing a business and being an entrepreneur? Because for so many people who love the the, the practice of coaching, like maybe if that is your purpose or your calling, you can actually do that perhaps as part of an organization, right? Instead of having your own business. So I wanted to say that because building a business truly does require skills and commitment. But if you're just so discouraged about growing the business that I'm going to venture to say, don't do it. Like don't be an entrepreneur. Find another way to do the work that you're really passionate about without having to go through the pains of entrepreneurship. Like don't put yourself in a situation where all you're going to feel is just discouraged and defeated about your lack of results. Because I really do think that you can do the thing that you love without having to start a business. And that's a key lesson that I learned in 2023 this year is that, you know, being an entrepreneur, a business owner, a content creator, a thought leader, right? Like it will require you to be someone who is willing to do the work of building your dreams, right? Okay, so that was a bit of a, a detour. So now on that note, I want to also talk about um, my recent rebrand in 2023. So this includes not just rebranding my signature program from the Site Hustle Club program to the Thought Leader Club program, and also the rebranding of the podcast from the Site Hustle Club podcast to the Thought Leader Club podcast, but it also includes... Um, the direction that I'm working towards and the vision I see for my career in the next few years. So I want to share just a bit about the rebrand and what I'm working towards in the next one to three years. As some of you may remember, my offers messaging used to comprise of words and phrases like five to 10K a month or six figures and soft launching and my client signed X clients in X months, or they made X number of dollars in Y months. But honestly, this year, when I really took the time to think about why I'm using this verbiage in my marketing or content, and I also want to just say, like, yes, these were terms and phrases that are true to me, right? Like, these are true to my business and the clients I work with. But Putting that aside, when I really ask myself the question of what do I want to be known for and do I want to be known for this sort of language, I would say no. And that's when I realized that I've been checking off the boxes of what I thought I had to say or what I had to do or what I had to sell if I was a coach. And I was essentially subscribing to what I thought a successful business coach is supposed to do, say, or sell. And that led to another observation, which is that I was, I noticed that I was attracting several different profiles of clients. And although at the time of onboarding the clients, I was very confident that I could help all of them. Now with hindsight, I could see that there are different qualities or characteristics among the clients. So for example, one uh, profile could look like they experience a lot of very intense disappointment or frustration when they're not signing clients. They're constantly questioning their content and messaging over and over and over again. They're always asking for coaching and revisions on their messaging for their offer. They're feeling angry towards their audience and so on. Another profile is someone who is genuinely excited to learn the skill of thought leadership they genuinely like the content creation process and they genuinely like to think about other people more than themselves and so on right so that's just some examples of the profiles of clients i've worked with but as you can see even though 
profile one and profile two may share the similar goal of signing clients for their business, there were still clear differences. And for me, although I could technically help both of them and many different profiles of clients, there were clearly certain types of clients that I preferred working with. And also my style of coaching and approach was more conducive to their success. And that is why I took quite a bit of time this year to really think about like what are the clients that I work best with and also what are my strengths and gifts as a coach, as an entrepreneur, and as a content creator and thought leader. And when I really like took the time to write down all of my strengths, it was pretty clear that like the common thread among my strengths is that I'm really good at coaching people to become known for their thought leadership, for their story, and also building a body of work that captures that thought leadership and showcases their story and what they want to be known for. But in the recent years, because I was not like tapping into my superpowers and I was operating out of who I thought I had to be as a coach, I wasn't doubling down on that, right? So when I really got clarity over what I'm really good at and what are the characteristics of the the clients that I'm best suited to work with, and I now had the awareness that I was making a lot of decisions based on what I think I should be doing or saying, now with all of this information, the final question that I asked myself was, what do I want to be known for in the next one to three years? And for the past few years, I was known as side hustle or known for side hustle, right? Like side hustle coach, helping side hustlers, the side hustle club program, side hustle club podcast. Cheryl was a side hustler for like three years, right? But for the next three years, what I really want to be known for is thought leader, coaching future thought leaders, teaching people how to build a body of work that captures their thought leadership, et cetera. And that's when it hit me, my story and myself have evolved. And as a result, there is now a gap between where I am now in 2023 versus where I want to be one to three years from now. And specifically, being known for side hustling, creating a six-figure business as a side hustler, teaching people how to sign clients. Like, although all of these were my lived experiences, and it's something that I have helped people on, and it worked, right? Like, I've made money and grown my business from helping people doing these things. But I now see that my dreams have evolved. And in the next one to three years, I no longer want to be known for side hustling or helping people sign clients. And instead, like these might be the outcomes that are the byproducts of what I really want to be known for, which is helping people become known for something, helping them build a body of work that lets them really highlight their their thought leadership really be known for their story and how amazing they are at what they do. This is now my one to three year dream. And if this is what I want to create in the next few years, then I've got to start aligning my present day decisions to match what it is that I'm building towards starting now. And that is exactly why I rebranded around October of 2023. And I think this is a really good point to start to transition from this episode to part three of this three-part series. So in the next episode, I'm going to share a lot more about what my my next plans are, what my goals are, how I'm going to make my goals happen, et cetera. But to wrap up this episode, which is the part two, I want to share a reflection that I've been really marinating upon a lot recently, which is... I really want to encourage all of us to take the time to recognize what you've created and who you've become. Because the version of you, when you first embarked on your thought leadership career or your business journey, or that version of you months ago or years ago, they are likely so mind blown at what you've created and who you've become and what you've navigated in just the past few years or past few months alone, right? And no matter what your business results or career results look like right now, there are still years ahead of you. 
And whether you're deeply satisfied right now with how things are going, or maybe you're like, oh, I didn't really hit the mark yet. Like, don't let the past be the reason to slow down the rest of your journey ahead as an entrepreneur, as a creator, and as a thought leader. Let's always, always recommit to our vision and goals and step powerfully into the rest of the journey ahead and continue to create incredible results in our lives and businesses and thought leader careers and really become that next level version of ourselves that the version of us today would be so proud of. So with that, thank you so, 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 so much for joining me in this super long, this is a long ass episode. I, I'm pretty sure it's the longest. Yes, it is definitely the longest episode, solo episode today. Um, so yeah, I think I'm just gonna wrap up here. I am parched, I am dehydrated, I'm gonna go drink some water. Um, but yes, stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you so, 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 so much for tuning into this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Sounds good? Awesome. Let's get to work.